the Qin state, the predecessor to the Qin dynasty that unified China. Known as the Qin state, the state of Qin, the great Qin, or simply just the Qin. It was one of the ancient Chinese states that existed during the period of the Zhou dynasty, which I covered in a previous video. Why not go check it out if you have not seen it once you have watched this video. The Qin origins are traditionally dated as beginning in 897 BC, when they retook the western lands previously lost to the nomadic tribes of the Rong people. Following extensive legalist reform during the 4th century BC, the Qin emerged as one of the dominant powers of the seven warring states. More about that later in the video. And eventually unified those seven states of China in 221 BC under its first imperial emperor, Qin Shi Huang of the Qin dynasty. The Qin dynasty was a very brief but important period of ancient Chinese history. History of Qin Written by Sima Qian, the 2nd century BC historical text, records of the Grand Historian, claim that the Qin state's origins can be traced back to Xuanzu, one of five legendary emperors of ancient times. One of his descendants, Bo Yi, was granted the name of Ying by un-emperor Shang. During the period of the earlier Xia and Shang dynasties, the Ying clan split in two, the western branch migrating across the Ordos Plateau to the Jianqiu or the Hill of the Quarongs, which is in present-day Lixian in Gansu province. The eastern branch of that clan settled to the east of the Yellow River in what is today Shanxi province. The ancestors of this eastern branch later became the rulers of the Zhao state. The western clan of the Ying family was strongly allied to the politically influential Marquis of Shen, who was relied upon by the Zhou to control the nomadic Rong people. The Western Ying lived among the Rong tribes, sometimes in battle, and other times marriages took place between the two. The Qin were at that time looked down upon by the Central Plains states due to the Qin location of the boundaries of what was then considered habitable territory and for their close association with the Rong and Dai tribes. Over the course of several generations, allegiances altered, and when the Western Zhou fell in 771 BC, the Yin clan, by then known as Qin, held considerable land once held by the Rong, and for their support, the newly installed King Ping. The Eastern Zhou's first ruler granted Qin the elevation from a minor vassal state to a major state with self-autonomy. Further promises were given of more land if the Qin could remove the Rong tribes from former Zhou lands. The next generations of Qin rulers enthusiastically removed the remaining Rong in a number of military campaigns. In doing so, they greatly expanded their territory and the Qin rulers considered themselves as a leg legitimate inheritors of those former Zhou lands. Spring and Autumn Period The Qin had little interaction with other states due to their ongoing concerns with the Rong, which continued throughout the Spring and Autumn Period of 722 to 481 BC. The only exception to this was the neighbour to the immediate east, the Jin. The Jin were a large vassal state of the Zhou, and the Qin and Jin had good diplomatic relations, mostly through intermarriages between each royal clan, although there were occasional armed skirmishes. During the reign of Duke Mu of Qin, the Jin was a formidable power under their leader, Duke Xian of Jin. When the Duke died, the Jin plunged into internal conflict 
that Duke Xian's sons fought that who should succeed their father. The eventual winner of that contest became Duke Hui of Jin, and shortly after, in 647 BC, the Jin state was struck by famine and Duke Hui requested assistance from the Qin. Out of goodwill, partly due to his being married to Duke Hui's half-sister, Duke Mu sent food and agricultural equipment to aid the Jin. However, the following year, when the Qin was suffering a similar fate, Duke Hui refused to refer, return the favour of the previous year. This led to a breakdown in relations and a war between the Qin and Jin in 645 BC. Duke Hui was defeated, captured and only released when land was ceded to the Qin and an alliance signed. One of Duke Hui's exiled brothers, Chong Er, was supported by the Qin in overthrowing his brother. Chong Er became the new ruler as Zhu Wen, and relative parity between the two states was restored. With his eastern front secured, Zhu Mu was able to once again launch campaigns against the wrong tribes. Warring States Period Over several years and numerous battles, alliances changed, but little changed ge geographically as far as boundaries were concerned. The Central Plain states were developing, while the Qin was still undeveloped and in decline. By this time, the Jin state had been partitioned, and the Wei state was the most powerful on the Qin's eastern border. The Qin were largely able to rely on natural defences, such as the Hangu Pass to the northeast of present-day Lingbao in Hunan province, and the Wu Pass in present-day Danfeng County. These two passes protected the Guangzhou heartland of Qin territory. Between 413 and 409 BC, the Wei army, led by Wu Qi, crossed these passes and attacked the Qin with support from Zhao and Han, conquering some Qin territory. Legalist Reforms After those losses, the Qin rulers sought legal, economic and social reforms. When Duke Xiao became the Qin leader, he called forth men of talent, including scholars, administrators, militarists and theorists from other states, to come to Qin to help with those of land and positions of high office as a reward. These legalist reforms included commoners being granted citizenship rights. Many people resettled in agricultural clusters, which in turn focused on an increase in agricultural output. Meritocracy was conducted, especially within the military, with soldiers and officers receiving recognition for their good service, regardless of their background. Harsh punishments were also handed out for even minor offences, which included nobility and royalty receiving such sentences. After a number of decades, the harsh regime strengthened the Qin, both economically and militarily, with the state being transformed into an efficiently functioning unit. After the death of Duke Xiao, the new ruler was King Fa Hui Wen, and his successors retained the reform systems and helped lay the foundation for the Qin's later unification of China under the Qin dynasty, beginning in 221 BC. The theories of Shang Yan, combined with those of Shen Bu Hai and Shen Dao, would form the core of the philosophies of legalism. The Qin rose to a level of prominence in the late 3rd century BC after those reforms were implemented, emerging as one of the dominant powers of the Seven Warring States. Seven Warring States The Seven Warring States, also known as the Seven Kingdoms, referred to the Seven Hegemonic States during the Warring States period of 475 to 221 BC in ancient China. The Seven States were the Qin, Qi, Chu, Yan, Han, Zhao and Wei. 
the weak Zhao sovereignty during the Eastern Zhou dynasty quickly lost control of its vassal states, with numerous autonomous states overreaching and expanding their polit political ambitions via diplomacy and warfare. This sparked a cha chaotic period of conflicts which became known as the Spring and Autumn period. Most of the smaller, weaker states were conquered and annexed by the larger ones, with the landscape eventually dominated by just seven of the most powerful states. Wars were frequent and increasingly violent. Most of the seven warring states undertook reforms in their military and bureaucracy to enable them to mobilize resources on a grand scale. This in turn led to increases in warfare in addition to some significant cultural and economic developments. Among the seven warring states, the state of Qin became the strongest, eventually conquering and annexing the other six. The Han were the first to fall in 230 BC, with the Qi the last to surrender in 221 BC. Ying Zheng, the king of Qin, created a new title for himself, Huangdi, becoming the first of China's imperial emperors, Qin Shi Huang. The Qin state then became the Qin dynasty as China entered its era of imperial rule, a period that lasted for two millennia. Development projects and meritocracy. In the century after, after the reforms initiated by Shang Yang, the Qin kings authorized several development projects such as irrigation canals and defensive structures. Previously, the Qin army had been under the control of nobles and feudal levies. After the reforms initiated by Shang Yang, the aristocracy system was abolished and replaced by one that was based on meritocracy. This system meant ordinary citizens were treated equally to the nobles and able to be promoted to high ranks. Military discipline was also strongly enforced and the soldiers trained to be able to adapt better to each battle situation they may have found themselves facing. The military strength of the Qin also increased with the full backing of the state. In 318 BC, the Qin were attacked by an alliance of five other states. The Wei, Zhou, Han, Yan and Chu, however, were unable to advance beyond the Hangu Pass and were eventually defeated after a counterattack by the Qin. The five-state alliance eventually fell apart due to issues of trust, suspicion and an overall lack of coordination. The reforms also meant an increase in the amount of labour available. This was used in public works projects that boosted agriculture, which in turn meant the vast military of over one million soldiers could be maintained, supplied and fed. Actions against Chu. The Chu state, located to the southeast of Qin territory, became the target of Qin aggression during the reign of King Wei Wen. At that time, the Chu had a larger operational ready army than the Qin, although its military was not as efficient due to corruption and divisions of loyalty among its nobles. Over a number of years, under a Qin strategist named Zhang Ye, several diplomatic plots against the Chu were executed together with military raids on the Chu's northwestern border. After several defeats, the Chu were forced to cede territories to the Qin. The Chu king, Huai I, ordered his soldiers to attack the Qin, but his, but his allies did not join him. Instead, they sided with the Qin, and the Chu faced another defeat. In 299 BC, Huai I was captured and remained in captivity until his death. The Qin sacked the Chu capital of Chen in present-day Jiangling County, Hubei Province, with the Chu Crown Prince fleeing to the new capital of Shoshan in present-day Shou County in Anhui Province, 
where he was crowned as King Xinxiang. Wars against Zhao, Han and Wei After the death of King Wei Wen, the new king Zhao Xiang shifted Qin attention to the central plains while seeking good diplomatic relations with the more distant states of Yan and Qi. The military campaigns over the next five decades saw the states of Han and Wei reduced in size to become nothing more than buffer states as the Qin territories expanded east beyond the Yellow River. In 265 BC, the Qin launched its biggest attack yet on the Han, which forced that state to cede Shandang in present-day Shanxi province and offered Shandang to the Zhao, which sparked a conflict between the Qin and Zhao, which culminated in the three-year-long battle of Champing. A few years ago, I began writing a book based around that battle. Maybe one day I will get around to completing it. The Battle of Changping was followed by another three-year siege by the Qin on the Zhao's capital city of Handan. The concept of total war engaged at Changping was not seen again in world history for another 2,000 years until World War I in 1914. The Qin victory in 260 BC was largely due to schemes used to stir up internal conflict within the Zhao. This led to the Zhao's military leaders being replaced. The Qin commander at the Battle of Changping ordered the execution of up to 400,000 prisoners of war, the majority being buried alive. When the Qin arrived at the Zhao capital of Handan in an attempt to completely conquer the Zhao, they were met by fierce resistance. After several years of constant military operations, the Qin were exhausted. When the Zhao requested assistance from the neighboring states of Wei and Chu, the Wei, seeing an opportunity, attacked the Qin, which resulted in a retreat by the Qin. With the Wei able to retake some of the land they lost in earlier engagements. Qin Wars of Unification With the sudden death of King Xuanxiang in 247 BC, 13-year-old Ying Zheng became the new king, although he did not wield full power of state until 238 BC. By that time, he had eliminated his main political rivals of Liu Bu Wei and Lao Ai. When he had full power of state, Ying Zheng formulated a plan to conquer the six other states and unify China. The weakest of the seven states, Han, was attacked in 230 BC, with the Qin successfully conquering that state within one year. The Zhao, having resisted Qin assaults over several years, finally fell in 228 BC after its capital fell to the Qin. A noble managed to escape with some soldiers and proclaimed himself the King of Dai. That itself fell to the Qin another six years later. The next target was the state of Yang. Its crown prince Dan had sent the Jin Ke on a failed assassination attempt and the Qin used that as a reason to attack Yang. The deciding battle was on the eastern bank of the Yi River in 226 BC. King Shi of Yan escaped to Liaodong where they were eventually overwhelmed in 222 BC. Wang Ben led a Qin army into Wei and besieged the capital of Daliang for three months in 225 BC. The city was eventually taken when Wang Ben redirected the waters of the Yellow River and the Hong Canal through the city which led to the Wei surrender. In 224 BC, the Qin was preparing to attack its most powerful rival, the Chu state. The veteran general Wang Jian stated that the invasion force needed to be at least 600,000 soldiers in strength. His opinion was ignored by the younger general Li Xin, who thought 200,000 sufficient for the task. Li Xin was put in command of the attack, however, 
the Chu were ready for the attack and defeated the invasion force. The defeat was looked on as the greatest setback for the Qin in their efforts to unify China. Wang Jian was placed in command of an army 600,000 strong as he originally requested. His larger army secured victory against the Chu in 224 BC. The next year, the Chu capital of Saoshan was captured, which brought to an end the Chu state. In 222 BC, the Wuyu region that covers the present day provinces of Zhejiang and Jiangsu was taken, leaving just one rival state in the way. In 221 BC, the Qin advanced on the Qi heartland. Instead of marching directly through its western border, the Qin took a detour and their swift arrival at the Qi capital of Linzhe took the Qi by surprise. They surrendered without a fight, meaning China was now unified under the rule of Qin. Ying Zheng declared himself Qin Shi Huang, meaning the first emperor of China. He subsequently founded the Qin dynasty and became China's first sovereign ruler. That is all for this video. If you have enjoyed watching and it has shown you a little detail of life here in China, then your subscribing to my channel would mean a lot to me. Thank you for watching. Make sure you click on the link to the next video. And until the next time, goodbye for now.